Okay, today's daily rehab is to help you correct two glute exercises that I see people doing in the gym to help you get the most benefit out of what you're doing. Now, these two exercises are for glute med and glute min, not glute max, so we're dealing with hip abduction, so glute med and min, and we're gonna do them open chain. So there's a lot of closed chain stuff that we do in physio, namely the one leg ball squat, things like this, okay, closed chain work. But you also need open chain. So the open chain work, we're gonna do one lying down, one standing up, because they both benefit, and I'm gonna show you what I want you to do to help get the benefit of core and spinal stability here, to help you with your targeting in the glute med here. Because there is point just doing glute med exercises randomly without too much control, it builds the strength, but you, when you're in a rehab phase, you wanna also work on connecting the pathway between your glute and your core and making the whole thing more stable. So, what I mean by that is, first one, now I'll show you without the band, then we'll go through without, with the band, is your side lying abduction. So, think of glute med and min, they're gonna do some abduction, right? Glute med, glute min, they're just different angles, so there's different things that they do, but when they work together as a unit, you're gonna get abduction, right? So you see people doing this a lot. We're not talking about external rotation, we're talking about abduction. What I want you to do with this is make sure that with your spinal position, you're trying to not be completely flattened through here. Now, if you can't maintain a sort of a neutral spine here by keeping your core on here, if you find that you always sink all the time, I suggest you put something underneath that, okay, to lift up like this to keep a bit more of a neutral spine in there, all right? And that'll help you maintain that position that you want to be in to then engage your core a bit more. You don't have to have this, but some people, especially if they've got wider hips, tend to really sink down there and they find it really hard to move. Also, it teaches you to stop moving at that point because when I raise my legs, so when I do this movement here, what I don't want doing is movement of my spine. That's the crucial part. And I see a lot of people trying to do lots of movement like this, but they're all over the shop with their spine. Now that's, yes, it's gonna work here, they'll feel the burn there, they feel what they're doing, but it's not really gonna help them functionally, especially for playing sport. So what I want you to try and focus on is if you've gone through your cork, you know how to work on transverse abdominis, you know how to keep that nice and tight through here without holding your breath, so you're breathing up here, tight through here. What you wanna aim for at that point there is only raising your leg as far as when you feel like you're sort of crunching in or moving this part here. So if I hold this here, and then with my foot, keep it straight, keep my toe down a little bit, so my heel is up, and my leg, if you look at where that is, it's actually in a little bit of extension, okay? It's not directly sort of straight down, it's in a little bit of extension. I'll explain why that is in a minute. But if you can keep that there, when you lift your leg, you have gotta keep your knees straight, Slowly take the weight out and hold it there. You'll feel that it should work straight away in here. Now, what you're trying to aim to do is only raise your leg as much as you can control your spine. And when you feel like you're side tilting like that, that's when you stop. So instead of going all the way up here and tilting the spine, you may find it's actually only a small movement you need into abduction to get the most benefit. So like I said, hold it and then raise the leg, keep that position and then think, I don't want to move here, raise it up, get the burn, and then slow it down again. So you're sort of almost more focusing on what's happening centrally here than what's happening in the glute. That'll do its job. You stabilize here, you raise your leg, it's gonna fire straight into there, and you're gonna get the burn in there. And you'll probably find that that is almost more burn than what you did before, but also it's way more functional for you. Okay, you're gonna get a lot more motor pattern learning for sport and exercise if you stabilize and do that. Because then you're learning independence of the hip from here. You're not relying on you having to move your back to raise your leg, which we'll see a lot of people doing. So that's your first one to aim for. The second thing I want you to do is maybe just have it a little bit behind, instead of straight down, a little bit behind. The reason for that is what you can do then is keep your pelvis stacked forward and always know that your pelvis is in front of your foot. That'll stop you using your TFL too much on the side. The TFL's gonna work anyway, but the bias is to trying to get your glute med and min working more. So if your pelvis, if your foot rolls back and your pelvis is like back like that, when you raise your leg up, I'm gonna use my TFL more here, best because in the line of pull, than my glute. 
Okay, I'll still use my glute, but I just don't want the TFL to be biased here. I certainly don't want any hip flexor stuff going on here. So make sure, you don't have to be sort of rolled forward. I just want to make sure you're stacked, toned here, foot a little bit behind. Then when you raise it, it's definitely gonna target that more, okay? So that's your first one. If you nail that, okay, if you can keep that stable, then you put the band on for a little bit of resistance. Don't go too hardcore with this. Try and keep it pretty subtle. This is a light band, but it's amazing what resistance does. So when you're working on this, above the knees for this one, okay? So go back in this position, towel or no towel, it's up to you. Okay, make sure that's not too big. So when you're in this position, keep that leg straight. Okay, just think, okay, foot's a little bit behind the hip, all right? I'm trying to maintain my neutral first. Think about this position here. Take the weight out slightly, so tone, weight, okay? Then you work on a bit of that. And you can see with a bit of stretch on that resistance, you may find you have to come back for less, forward for more, okay, but not too far forward. That subtle bit of resistance there without trying to move here. So if I've got to keep that on, concentrate, and only go as high as I can control with my spine, you'll get more load, more load, okay, more burnout. But like I said, only put that on if you can sort out the spinal stability first. So that's your lying down version. The standing up version, again, a little bit more functional. I would probably do that first to learn your spinal stability, get that nailed before you do the standing one. The standing one is more functional for sport and exercise, okay, because you're in a standing position, you're not lying down. Um, but it does require you to have a lot, be a lot more stable, especially in the other hip, and I'll show you why. So, if I take this mat away, what you'll need this time, you will need a band with this one. Again, don't go too full on with the band. Keep it something simple, okay? You probably, the power band might be too much for some people, so a subtle theraband is fine. Remember, we're trying to isolate this muscle, get some really good tone. Once we've got that, of course, you can increase the band load. So wrap this around something solid down the bottom, okay? Now, obviously, you're gonna put that on the foot that you are working on the glute. Now, I see people holding onto a pole, doing this, and going out the side. Now, What's happening there is if I just work on that one, you can see I'm bending in my spine again. Okay, I'm trying to tilt over, so I'm not stabilizing it. Two, I'm also cheating by holding onto that. So what I want you to try and do is stand on one foot without holding the pole for the start. What that's going to do is, you know, when I work this side, I'm working my glute medium and on this side doing abduction. This leg is doing the stability. Okay, so which is really good for someone like a footballer who has to stand on one leg and kick a ball. If they want some power through here, they need to come out to kick a ball. This is a really good exercise. So try and focus on keeping that knee nice and stable, having this leg doing the work, but you've got to think about here. So again, you've got to stabilize here. I'd do a little bend in the knee, a little bend in the hip. Stand on one leg, which is going to cook this side anyway. And see if you can you have your hand here ready for the pole, but don't touch it. I want this leg semi-straight, keep core on here, and go into abduction that way without moving here, all right? Now, I would go on a little bit of an angle, not directly outwards, I'd go on a little bit of an angle out that way. Again, we want to bias glute meter min. I don't want to do too much TFL. If I go straight out the side, it's a lot of TFL going on here. So if you can go, not extension, because we're not doing glute max, okay? And you're certainly not doing external rotation you are going straight out to the side on a backward angle. All right, so that movement there. So take this hand away, core on here, little bend in the knee, and just go out to where you're comfortable, you can't go any further, and then back. And you're always trying to maintain priority is here. The glute burning is secondary. And you can see I've got to concentrate a little bit of this. I've got to look at the ground, focus. Now what's happening here is this one is on fire as well because this is doing the closed chain work, this is doing the open chain work. So when you do this, don't be surprised that both glutes are firing up. And that's great, because you've got a two exercises in one with this one. And obviously, when you finish that side, do your sets of 10, maybe three, four sets of that, flip around, do it the other way. Only some of you are gonna come a little bit unstuck if you don't have knee stability on one side. If you've got a bit of a weak glute that's controlling knee stability, you might have a bit of a problem with this. This is where you just don't hold on to it, but you can, cheat for a bit to get your stability right on that leg. So if this leg is really wobbly and you can't do it, 
then you put your finger on the pole and that'll help your brain just work on speed. You'll be surprised how much just touching that or a little bit of grab on the pole works on this one here, okay? So, see if you can correct your glute exercise to get those glute meds, mins working a little bit better and integrating into your core and your spinal stability by doing that stuff correctly. Follow those rules. See you next time.